ever wondered about the complexities of courtroom dramas? Well, today's news takes it to another level. In a rather unusual turn of events, a defense team has made a peculiar request to a judge. They've asked the judge to allow their client, former President Donald Trump, to continue verbally attacking the judge's daughter. The request itself is as unconventional as it sounds, and it's stirred up a storm of controversy in the media and legal circles alike. The key figures in this convoluted narrative are, of course, the former president himself, Donald Trump, and the judge presiding over the case. The judge, whose identity we won't disclose out of respect for his privacy, has been tasked with overseeing a case involving hush money payments. This is where the plot thickens, as the judge's daughter has somehow found herself in the crosshairs of the defense's strategy. This isn't just a story about a courtroom battle, but a tale of personal attacks and questionable legal tactics. It's an exploration of the lengths to which a defense team might go to protect their client, and it raises questions about the ethical boundaries that govern our legal system. The defense argues that the attacks on the judge's daughter are a part of their client's First Amendment rights. They suggest that these verbal attacks are a part of the larger narrative that shapes public opinion, and therefore, they should be allowed to continue. On the other side of the aisle, critics argue that such tactics are not only unethical, but also a blatant attempt to intimidate the judge and influence his decisions. It's a delicate balancing act between upholding the freedom of speech and maintaining the integrity of the court. This controversial request has left many of us scratching our heads, wondering about the boundaries of free speech and the sanctity of our judicial system. It's a narrative that's still unfolding, with each turn more intriguing than the last. Now, let's dive deeper into the case to understand the conversation at hand. The law can be as complex as a labyrinth, and in this case, it's no different. Now, let's discuss the legal complexities of this case. The defense team is making an unusual request, asking the judge to allow their client, a high-profile figure, to continue verbally attacking the judge's daughter, a request that, on the face of it, seems to blur the lines between free speech, personal attacks, and legal ethics. The defense's argument hinges on the First Amendment, the right to freedom of speech. They argue that their client's remarks fall under this umbrella, even if they are directed at the judge's daughter. But it's not as straightforward as it may seem. To understand why, we need to look at the legal precedents. The First Amendment, while broad, is not absolute. There are exceptions, including defamation, incitement to violence, and speech likely to cause a significant disruption in court proceedings. So, the question becomes, do these remarks fall into any of these exceptions? If the remarks are deemed defamatory, it means they're false and harm the reputation of the person they're directed at. But proving defamation is no easy task. It requires demonstrating that the remarks were false, caused harm, and were made without adequate research into their truthfulness. If the remarks incite violence, they could be considered unprotected speech. But this too is a high bar to clear, it requires proving that the remarks are likely to incite or produce imminent lawless action, a standard established by the landmark Supreme Court case, Brandenburg v. Ohio, back in 1969. Then there's the question of whether the remarks could cause a significant disruption in court proceedings. This could be the case if the remarks create a hostile environment for the judge, or affect their ability to perform their duties impartially. The defense's request, if granted, would set a precedent, potentially opening the floodgates for similar requests in future cases. It could reshape the boundaries of permissible courtroom behavior and redefine the balance between free speech and respect for the court. However, this is not a straightforward decision for the judge. They must navigate through this legal labyrinth, balancing the right to free speech against the need to maintain order and respect in the courtroom and they must do so while under personal attack, a situation that few judges have ever found themselves in. A tangle of legalities, isn't it? But what about the ethical implications? Ethics and morality often sit in the judge's chair, especially in cases like these. 
When we look into the ethical implications of the defense team's request, we're stepping into a realm that's not just about law, but about right and wrong. It's about how we, as a society, perceive justice and fairness. Imagine the defense team's request as a ripple in a pond. The initial splash is the act itself, a request to continue verbal attacks. But the ripple effect is where the ethical implications come into play. For one, it could distort the perception of the legal system. If such a request is granted, it could set a precedent that undermines the dignity and respect we accord to our judges and their families. Furthermore, it could potentially impact the public's trust in the judicial process. Trust is a pillar that upholds our legal system. If the public perceives that a person can leverage their influence to manipulate the process, this trust could erode. Now let's consider the potential impact on the judge's family. We're dealing with human beings who are far removed from the legal squabbles, yet they might find themselves at the center of a storm they didn't invite. It's crucial to remember that the law is not just about rules and regulations, but also about protecting individuals and preserving their dignity. In this case, the ethical considerations are not just about the defense team's request, but also about the wider implications. It's about the potential damage to the integrity of the legal system, the erosion of public trust, and the impact on innocent individuals who might be caught in the crossfire. So, as we grapple with the legal labyrinth, we must not lose sight of the ethical dimensions. They are just as just as important in shaping our collective understanding of justice and fairness. The ethical dimensions are just as complex, but what does this mean for the people directly involved? Behind the legal jargon and ethical debates, there are real people with real emotions. This statement is particularly poignant when we consider the human element involved in this case. We're not just talking about laws, regulations or principles here. We're talking about individuals, families even, caught in the middle of public scrutiny, legal battles and personal attacks. The judge at the heart of this controversy, for instance, is not merely an impartial entity presiding over the proceedings. He is a father, potentially dealing with the emotional turmoil of having his daughter verbally attacked in a very public setting. And it's not just about him. There's a family behind the robe and the gavel, each one of them likely grappling with the harsh glare of public attention and the emotional fallout of such attacks. The psychological impact of such a situation can't be underestimated. The strain, stress and constant scrutiny can take a toll, not just on the judge, but on his family as well. This emotional burden could potentially influence the judge's decisions, consciously or unconsciously. After all, he is human, and no matter how trained or experienced, he can't completely divorce his emotions from his professional duties. Moreover, the psychological effects of this public onslaught extend beyond the immediate family. They ripple out, affecting friends, colleagues, and even the broader community. It may lead to a sense of apprehension, a feeling of being under siege. It could undermine trust in the judicial system or create a climate of fear or resentment. But let's not forget the person on the other side of this case. Regardless of one's opinions on the matter, it's essential to remember that they too are human, with their own emotions, fears and vulnerabilities. They are not immune to the emotional strain of such a public legal battle, and it's worth considering how this might affect their mental well-being and their ability to participate in the proceedings. And then there's the emotional impact on the public. Cases like this, which play out in the public eye, can stir strong emotions among observers. Some may feel sympathy for the judge and his family. Others might support the defendant's right to voice their opinion, while others may feel disillusioned or even outraged. These emotional reactions can shape public discourse and sentiment, influencing how society views this case and similar situations in the future. The human element adds another layer of complexity, but what does the public think? Public opinion can be a powerful force, shaping the course of events. In our current scenario, the defense team's request, a plea to allow a continued verbal onslaught on the judge's daughter, has stirred a hornet's nest, sparking off a myriad of reactions from the public. Some have expressed shock, others outrage, and a few, a bizarre sense of amusement at the audacity of it all. 
This reaction in many ways could potentially influence the course of the case. Legal proceedings, after all, do not exist in a vacuum. They are embedded within the fabric of our society, susceptible to the ebb and flow of public sentiment. The law may be blind, but those who interpret and enforce it are not. They live in the same world as you and I, subject to the same information, the same narratives, the same public opinion. And this is where the role of media coverage becomes critical. The media, often termed as the fourth pillar of democracy, plays a significant part in shaping public perception. The way a story is told, the details that are highlighted, the narratives that are constructed, all contribute to forming the public's understanding of the case. In this particular situation, the media's portrayal of the defense team's request has been largely negative, painting it as a desperate move, devoid of any ethical or legal merit. This portrayal has, quite understandably, influenced public opinion, making it largely hostile towards the defense. However, it's important to remember that public perception, while influential, is not always synonymous with truth or justice. It's a reflection of collective sentiment, which can be swayed, manipulated, and even outright wrong. Public perception can be a game changer. But what's the final takeaway from all of this? That's a question we'll dive into in our next segment. In the end, every story leaves us with something to ponder upon. As we draw the curtain on this saga, it's important to reflect on the critical points we've discussed. The news article that sparked our conversation today detailed an unusual request by the defense in a hush money case. The defense asked the judge to allow their client, a prominent figure, to continue verbally attacking the judge's daughter. This certainly is not a common occurrence in any courtroom. This case has raised several questions about the legal system and its boundaries. Just how far can freedom of speech stretch within the courtroom? And what happens when personal attacks become part of the defense strategy? These questions are not easily answered, and they remind us that the law, while aiming for objectivity, must often navigate the murky waters of subjectivity and personal sentiments. The individuals involved in this case, from the judge to the defense and the person at the center of it all, each have their own unique perspectives and challenges. For the judge, maintaining impartiality in the face of personal attacks on a family member is no easy task. For the defense, using such an unorthodox strategy could be seen as a desperate or even reckless move. And for the person at the center, their reputation and future hang in the balance. This case has also highlighted the profound impact of public perception. As this story unfolds in the public eye, opinions are formed, judgments are made, and reputations are built or destroyed. The court of public opinion can be just as powerful, if not more so, than the actual courtroom. It reminds us of the importance of transparency, accountability, and public scrutiny in our society. In the broader context or on a larger scale, this case is a microcosm of broader societal issues. It reflects the ongoing debates about free speech, the justice system, and the role of personal ethics in our society. It reminds us that the law, while structured and systematic, is not immune to the complexities and contradictions of human behavior. As we move forward, it's essential to continue these discussions, to question, to critique, and to strive for a judicial system that upholds the principles of justice, fairness, and respect for all individuals, no matter their status or the circumstances. This case serves as a stark reminder of the complexities of the judicial system, the power of public perception, and the human element that lies at the heart of it all.